Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU. Today, Apple has released iOS 13.1 to the general public. We're going to discuss what new features it brings to the table and also talk about how it may in fact impact jailbreaking and whether or not we can expect a jailbreak for it. So with that said, there are going to be two links down below in the description to two different articles on the site, best tech info. The very first one is a jailbreak status checker page. This applies to not only iOS 13, the first release, but also the brand new 13.1 and future releases. Basically just visit this URL. It's gonna be the second one down below in the description, bookmark it. And the very second you open it, you'll see whether or not there's a jailbreak. There'll either be this big no or a big yes. If a jailbreak has been released, the download links will also be posted there. And the video on that article will also be linked in your cards right now. Basically, it goes into much more depth on when we may expect the very first iOS 13 jailbreak and kind of the whole timeline for everything. Again, everything you need to know can be found right there. But specifically for iOS 13.1, the very first link down below in the description will have additional details on the firmware, such as which new features it brings to the table and also a more in-depth explanation of things. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into this. Now following both the iOS 12.4 A12 jailbreaks release and that of iOS 13, Apple has released iOS 13.1 as the first update to iOS 13, which itself was only released last week. iOS 13.1 brings new features and bug fixes. In fact, iOS 13.1 should have been the version Apple shipped as 13.0 from the start. But due to Apple's need to meet their timeline for the iPhone launch, the company rushed the initial version of iOS 13. Now, in addition to bug fixes and performance enhancements, of which there are many, iOS 13.1 adds the following. Audio sharing, easily the most exciting feature of iOS 13.1. Devices running iOS 13.1 will be able to share the audio to a second set of H1 wireless headphones. This feature should also work with W1 powered devices, meaning all AirPods and Beats headphones with W1 or H1. Share ETA. Inside Apple Maps, you can now easily share your estimated time of arrival with any of your contacts you choose. Dynamic wallpapers. Apple has tweaked the existing colors and designs. They've also extended them to more devices as well. Siri shortcuts. Automations for Siri shortcuts allow users to run shortcuts automatically when specified conditions are met. For example, you can play your workout playlist when you start a workout on your Apple Watch. Volume icons. So now new glyphs appear next to the volume slider for connected devices, for example, AirPods and the HomePod. This also appears to extend to connected devices inside of the battery widget, even connected controllers. There are now new and more detailed HomeKit device icons inside of the Home app. There are also a number of minor changes. Apple has added improved mouse support and enhanced the AirDrop menu. There's now alpha channel support for HEVC video. Changes have been made to adding fonts. The TV icon has been updated and more. Now, as far as jailbreaking is concerned, again, I highly recommend bookmarking that link I told you guys about for a constantly updated jailbreak status checker page. It will also have download links for the next iOS 13 through 13.1 or higher jailbreak, like I said. As far as jailbreaking goes, it's not possible to jailbreak iOS 13.1 right now. The latest iOS 12.4 jailbreak was patched with the release of iOS 12.4.1. And of course, that means Apple has also rolled the patch into the first version of iOS 13 as well. Once a jailbreak is patched, it usually stays patched, unless of course it's iOS 12.4, which as some of you may already know, the main exploit utilized by the iOS 12.4 jailbreak, the Sock Puppet exploit, was patched by Apple with the release of iOS 12.3, but for whatever reason, they didn't include that patch in iOS 12.4. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Once Apple patches a jailbreak, it usually stays patched. So currently we don't expect jailbreak to target iOS 13.1 for the first release of an iOS 13 jailbreak utility. In other words, they will most likely target iOS 13.1 and up. But 
That doesn't mean that you should hastily update. It's, of course, best policy to stay on as low of a firmware as you possibly can. This ensures that you have the best chance of being jailbroken, as lower firmwares are almost always supported once a jailbreak drops. In contrast, if you're too high, you'll be locked out of jailbreaking. For example, the first iOS 12 jailbreak was released for iOS 12.1.2. Now, all firmwares below 12.1.2 could jailbreak, but those on 12.2 couldn't jailbreak. The only way was to downgrade to 12.1.2 while Apple was still signing the target firmware. So as I'm sure you can see, it's all just a guessing game, but to ensure that the odds are in your favor, we recommend staying on as low of a firmware as you possibly can. And of course, if you are currently jailbroken on iOS 12.4, for example, regardless of which device you have, definitely avoid updating to iOS 13.1 at all costs because doing so will effectively lock you out of jailbreaking until a brand new utility is released, which of course could be a while as we have discussed before. Now, I also wanted to talk about a relatively new update in the world of jailbreaking that we haven't really discussed here on the channel yet, specifically for A13 powered devices, which includes things like this brand new iPhone 11 Pro Max, the 11 Pro, and the 11 for now. Also, new iPads will be expected to feature an A13X CPU. But anyway, as for A13, Hacker IB Sparks was able to get TFP0 working on A13 basically the same day the devices were released. Now a TFP0 patch basically removes a restriction that prevents a user from accessing the kernel task. This patch allows any executable running as root to call the kernel task and then modifies the kernel VM region to both read and write. So basically I'm sure you're wondering what does that even mean? For the layperson, all you need to know is that this is a crucial step in achieving full root access and in turn an A13 jailbreak on iOS 13 basically it's just great news he's proving that it is in fact possible and adding to this awesome news we have something even more exciting just a few days ago spark dev not to be confused with ib sparks tweeted out a video of what looks like a private exploit he said quote for anyone interested this is not the same bug as my previous poc video and he confirms that he actually found this one manually well today he quoted that tweet of his video saying quote still alive on 13 13.1 final. So guys, even more great news, especially considering the fact that this is demoed on an A13 powered device. So an iPhone 11 Pro Max. And even if nothing comes of this, it's just cool to see that it can be done. And it means that it is possible for when developers set their eyes on an iOS 13 firmware for a public jailbreak. Now, if you guys want a more specific time frame of when we might expect that, definitely check out our recent video on the topic, which in addition to the two articles I've been referencing throughout this video will be linked down below in the description. That one I go into so much more depth and this video really just builds upon that, seeing as iOS 13 is really the first release that we've had and we also have new great news pertaining to those A13 devices. But before we go, I wanted to quickly wrap up this video saying that you guys can back up your SHSH2 blobs on iOS 13 now so that you can restore to a firmware like 13.0 after Apple stops signing it. To do so, definitely check out the video that we have linked in your cards right now if you're on an A12 device. We'll also have one for lower devices in just a second, both of which will be linked below. And while they are in fact intended for iOS 12.4, they will work on iOS 13.0 and 13.1 as long as you're running iOS 12.4 on A12 and or you already know your device is non meaning you obtained it while you were still on iOS 12.4 if you no longer are on 12.4. So so that might sound a little bit confusing, but it definitely is explained more in the video I just mentioned. Now, if you own anything older than an iPhone 10s Max, 10s, 10R, or 2018 iPad Pro, follow the video we have linked in your cards now instead. Again, same thing goes for that video. Even though it's specifically for a lower firmware, it will still also work for 13.0 and 13.1 definitely back up your blob so you guys have those saved. So I really do hope this video helped you guys out. This is just the latest in the realm of jailbreaking. Be sure to subscribe if you have yet to, and if you wanna be fully in the loop, and if you wanna be notified anytime anything happens in the world of jailbreaking. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.
but be sure to stick around because this segment from one of our latest top tweaks videos is about to play. That way you guys know what to expect when we get an iOS 13 jailbreak. So first up, I don't know if you guys can see this, but up in the top right hand corner, I actually have my battery percentage right there instead of the battery icon. Now this is achieved entirely free with the tweak called battery percent X, but in this video, I'm actually using a paid tweak called Bazzy. And that tweak also adds this green indicator right at the top of my phone, also displaying my battery's percentage around the notch. All right, so for number two, this one is one of my favorites with Face ID devices. This one's called Fast Unlock X. So I'm gonna have to demo this with some B-roll, but basically when you have your device locked and you either tap to wake it or use the side button, whatever way, when you have Face ID enabled, when it normally recognizes your face, you'll have to swipe up from the bottom of the lock screen. But with this tweak enabled in contrast, when your face is recognized with Face ID, the phone will automatically take you to the home screen. No need to swipe. So it's just a quicker way to get into your phone without actually having to swipe up. You just look down at your phone and you're basically taken to the home screen. Now, while we're on the home screen and talking about this, one of my favorite tweaks is actually called Jumper. 